On 16 July 1945, it was the day when the most destructive weapon atomic bomb was tested for the first time. The physicist responsible for creating this atomic bomb was J. Robert Oppenheimer, who had no idea that his invention could be so terrifyingly powerful. When he witnessed the devastation caused by this atomic bomb with their own eyes, he just said, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. This atomic bomb brought destruction upon Oppenheimer, and made him wonder why and how he had brought such devastation to existence. The same person whose efforts led America to victory in World War II was later humiliated and disgraced worldwide by America. Oppenheimer achieved many feats in his life, but he will always be remembered in history as the father of the atomic bomb. He was born in 1904, when he was just 18, he dreamed of becoming a chemist, and this dream took him towards Harvard's university. But he couldn't join classes for a whole year due to some illness. Nevertheless, he completed his four-year degree in just three years. Besides becoming a chemist, he had a significant interest in physics as well. After Harvard, he went to a university in Germany for research in theoretical physics. At the young age of 23, he had completed his PhD. Oppenheimer returned to the America and immersed himself in the research once again. At this point, he had no connection with the atomic bomb, but then, Soviet's secret of creating the most powerful weapon in the world was revealed. Now, Albert Einstein sensed this threat from Hitler and wrote a letter to the American president, saying that the America should also prepare such a weapon, otherwise Hitler might conquer the whole America. Upon reading Einstein's letter, the American president took immediate action and ordered the initiation of the research project on the atomic bomb. Today, the famous project is known to the world as the Manhattan Project. It is believed that the atomic bomb might never have been created if Einstein had not written that letter to the American president. It was only appropriate for the American government to choose Einstein for the Manhattan Project because he had written that letter to the president. However, it didn't turn out that way. Einstein's background was from Germany, and the American army suspected that he might have some links with Soviets. Due to this reason, American authorities assigned the responsibility of the Manhattan Project to Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer agreed with Einstein's views and also desired that America should develop the atomic bomb. For this secret project, a whole city was built in New Mexico which was called Los Alamos. The American government started pouring massive amounts of money into the project. The total expenditure on this project during that time was 2 billion US dollars. In the history of America, this was the most important and highly classified project. However, maintaining this secret was quite challenging for the US military. In Los Alamos, a total of 130,000 workers were employed on this project, and they were carefully selected after through investigation to ensure that no information about the project leaked to the outside world. The staff included scientists, technicians, researchers, and other lower-level employees. Everyone was given these directions that, concerning the project they shouldn't disclose anything to anyone, not even their family. Nobody knew anyone by their real names, everyone was given a fake name. Letters would arrive here, but the address was a P.O. Box 1663 New Mexico. Even in official letters, the city name was not mentioned. To censor the letters, the censor department first opened and read all the letters before sending them further. Similarly, all the letters sent from here were also carefully read. Strict security was in place inside the project site. Workers couldn't enter without an entry pass, and they couldn't exit without an exit pass. This was even done in the birth certificates of children born in Los Alamos, where only P.O. Box 1663 was written, and the city name was not mentioned. All this was done to ensure that no small piece of information related to the atomic bomb leaked. Before the Manhattan Project, Robert Oppenheimer had already conducted research on nuclear fusion. It is a reaction where atoms are split and generate energy beyond the limit. Nature discovered the heaviest naturally occurring element which is uranium. In one atom of uranium, there are 92 protons and 146 neutrons. If you add them together, the total atomic mass of uranium comes out to be 238. After numerous experiments and research, scientists found that if uranium-238 undergoes a specific process, it yields uranium-235 which is an extremely unstable element. When a neutron collides with this new uranium-235, uranium splits and releases an incredible amount of energy. As soon as the split occurs, new neutrons are emitted which then collide with other uranium-235 atoms, and it becomes a chain reaction. 
This entire chain reaction takes place within a few microseconds, and the culmination of all these reactions results in a powerful explosion and energy release. If we compare a nuclear bomb to a regular TNT bomb, the destructive power of 1 kilogram of an atomic bomb is equivalent to about 3,500 kilograms of TNT. For instance the little boy bomb, that devastated Nagasaki was equivalent to approximately 15 million kilograms of TNT. This massive weight makes it practically impossible for any modern airplane to carry such a payload. The main drawback of using uranium in atomic bombs was that it is a natural element and available in limited quantities. But, researchers created a new element through nuclear transmutation that was even more unstable than uranium-235, and this new element is known as plutonium-239. The United States needed to complete the Manhattan Project quickly, because on one hand, World War II was ongoing, and on the other hand, there was a fear that Germany might develop such a bomb before them. Finally, on 16 July 1945, the world's first atomic bomb was ready, and when it was detonated, its unbelievable power horrified the whole world. This was the first weapon that had fallen into human hands, and its potential impact on humanity was unknown. Without understanding its consequences, America used it on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan during World War II. We also uploaded a video on why America dropped nuclear bombs on Japan, if you want to watch it, just click the link in description. In these two attacks, more than 250,000 people lost their lives. After this, Japan surrendered to America, and this marked the end of World War II. Now, you might think that America was pleased with Oppenheimer's achievements and would award him the Nobel Prize, but that was not the case. Initially, Oppenheimer expressed deep remorse because his creation had led to the deaths of millions of people. This incident shattered him from within, and he started distancing himself from the world. Oppenheimer became a delicate point for the America, and due to this reason, secret agencies started keeping an eye on him. However, what they feared eventually happened. In 1949, America's biggest enemy, the Soviet Union suddenly announced its successful atomic bomb test. The technology had leaked from America. Everyone suspected Oppenheimer's involvement due to his girlfriend's affiliation with the Communist Party and his wife's past membership in the same party. The American Communist Party used to have close ties with the Soviet Union, but Oppenheimer himself had no interest in politics. The American president ordered a curtain to be drawn between Oppenheimer and state secrets. An inquiry was set up, which accused Oppenheimer of being a Soviet agent. He maintained that he had no links with communism or the Soviets, and there was no evidence to support the claim. However, the decision went against him, even though he was once considered a powerful scientist, and he was humiliated within minutes. His security clearance and project rights were revoked. The scientific community raised voice against the decision, but to no avail. For the next several years, Oppenheimer lived a quiet life and stayed away from government projects. In 1961, when John F. Kennedy became the American president, he offered to create a new free and fair tribunal, which could potentially restore Oppenheimer's security clearance. However, this time Oppenheimer refused the offer. Kennedy knew Oppenheimer was innocent, and that's why he also awarded Oppenheimer with America's most prestigious scientific award. But by then, it had been too late. Oppenheimer had been diagnosed with cancer, and in 1966 he passed away. Share your thoughts about the Oppenheimer's achievement and America's behavior towards him in comment section and subscribe our channel for more informative videos.